Let's give a rousing Carolyn welcome to our president, Dr. Harris Estes. Good morning, everyone. What a rousing welcome. What a rousing welcome to be here, introduced by Joe Wright and the mighty sound of the Southeast. Let's hear it one more time for the USC Marching Band, led by Rebecca Phillips. Thank you all. Good morning again, everyone. What a beautiful day. Thank you, Joe. I'm honored to be joined by you and the other student government leaders today, including Andrew Dorsey, president of the Graduate Student Union. All of you ably represent the student body and are an important part of the university's leadership team. Also joining us today are people who help guide and support our eight university system with their tireless energy. I'm pleased that members of our board of trustees, our board of visitors, our alumni association board of governors, and our community advisory committee are here with us. We're also pleased that representatives of city and county government are here with us. We thank you for all you do for Columbia, for the Midlands, and for our state. And as always, I'm happy to recognize my wife and your first lady, Patricia. Patricia, thank you for your efforts on behalf of the university and the greater community. This horseshoe symbolizes our history, but it also represents the great promise of our future. Think of the men and the women who walked this ground, who lived and learned in these buildings, and even those who planted the trees around us. People who participated in the life of the university, who innovated when they had to, and who led when their leadership was needed. They were the people who paved the very long brick path that brought us to where we stand today. This morning, I'll offer some remarks about the last year, but those remarks will be expressed through the achievements of our own students, faculty, and staff. And then I'll spend some time that we have together talking about our future. Let me start again by focusing on our students. My most enjoyable moments as your president are those that I spend with our students. They are the ultimate reason why we are here, and they are also the great promise of America. In the tradition of nine freshmen who in 1805 formed the first class of South Carolina College, the class of 2015 started their college career at Carolina on August the 18th. This is a class that was selected from the largest, the brightest, and the most diverse pool of high school applicants ever, both in Columbia and throughout the system. We now serve more South Carolinians than ever. In fact, nearly half of the state's sons and daughters enrolled in a public college today are enrolled in the universities of South Carolina. We're honored as, as well that students from all 50 states, Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia, and from 113 nations are also enrolled in our university. Our students and their families recognize what has been reflected in national publications and rankings. Last year, the Princeton Review listed us as a top 50 best value public university, the only South Carolina university on the list. <coughs> and Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine described us as a top choice in the nation and one that delivers, quote, the best BA for the buck, end of quote. And we continue to, to cherish the designation by the Carnegie Foundation as being in the top tier of American research universities. Coupled with Carnegie's assessment of our community engagement, we're only one of 23 elite public universities to be included in both top rankings. More important than the rankings, though, 
We take pride and joy in seeing our students grow and thrive. I'd like to recognize one of them here. Reggie Bain is one of two Carolina scholars who were named as Goldwater Scholars this past year. Together with the other, Jim Talbert, he formed Carolina Science Outreach, a science demonstration project for K-12 schools around Columbia. Reggie, would you please stand and be recognized? Right there. Another outstanding student is Elizabeth Wilson from Georgetown, South Carolina, who will soon appear in a new Carolina television spot. Elizabeth is USC's Outstanding Woman of the Year for 2011 and plans to graduate next May, listen to this, with degrees in international business, finance, marketing, management science, and real estate, as well as with concentrations in three foreign languages, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. And she plans to complete these degrees in three years. Despite her hectic schedule, Elizabeth volunteers with many organizations, including Waverly Family Practice, where she promotes diabetes awareness. Please help me recognize Elizabeth Wilson. Finally, I'd like to recognize a student who is a neighbor of Greer, South Carolina. A week after pitching the thriller of a lifetime in Omaha, make that back-to-back -back thrills of a lifetime, he left for Alicante on the east coast of Spain for an intensive four-week program to improve his Spanish. Maybe his pitching too, I don't know. This young man demonstrates team leadership and has done extraordinarily well in his studies at Carolina. Please join me in welcoming a representative of one of USC's greatest achievements from last year, from our two-time college baseball World Series team, All-American pitcher Michael Roth. Michael, would you stand? This year, we will remain resolute in protecting the health, safety, and overall well-being of our student body. Everyone has noted the university's response to several regrettable incidents of alcohol abuse earlier in the semester. We needed to take strong action to represent the university's position and the students' interests. It's a pact we've made with families to take the best care of their sons and daughters while they are within our guardianship. I believe the actions we took will yield the appropriate results. There is nothing more important that we can do than to protect the lives and the well-being of our students and of our entire community. This is a very serious matter. This week we honor the memory of visiting EPI student Wan Wu Choi who was from Seoul, South Korea, who we lost this weekend. And of course, last Friday, this campus was honored to memorialize Associate Professor Jennifer Wilson, whose funeral took place yesterday in St. Louis. We must continue to be vigilant and to look out for one another like a family would. We must educate and protect one another Professionals at health centers, in law enforcement and safety, on, in other organizations on our campus and throughout the Midlands are here to support us. In my three years as president, I've been dedicated to creating a leadership environment where personal accountability, new and open thinking, civil discourse, and respect are the hallmark values. Leadership is evident in the creative and innovating, innovative work of our faculty, and our progress during the last few years has been noticed. Our faculty ranks were strengthened by three National Academy members, three fellows of the American Council of Learned Societies, 
and one National Medal of Science winner. These and our other outstanding faculty members work to help us set another milestone record for federal research funding this past year, reaching $227 million. We welcomed last year several new Smart State endowed chairs. Dr. Chris Rorden will direct the Brain Imaging Center in the College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Re J.C. Regalbuto will join the Renewable Fuel Center for Economic Excellence in the College of Engineering and Computing. And Dr. Igor Roninson has joined our Translational Cancer Therapeutic Center in the South Carolina College of Pharmacy. We also welcomed four new deans, Dr. Steve Lynn of the South Carolina Honors College, Dr. Anna Chayette in the College of Social Work, Dr. Lemuel Watson, College of Education, and Dr. Rob Wilcox in the School of Law. Also, while unable to join us today, I welcome Dr. Tom Moore as our new chancellor at USC Upstate. I'd now like to recognize Dr. Darcy Friedman. Darcy Friedman is a professor of, professor of social work. She's here with us, and I'm pleased that, that, that some of her class members are here too. Darcy led the establishment of Right Choice, a state farmers market in Orangeburg, which creates business opportunities for local farmers and provides access to fresh fruits and vegetables to rural South Carolinians as a means of fighting obesity and promoting healthy living. And Professor Joel Samuels of our law school is, is, is with us as well. Joel grew up in, in Sierra Leone while his father served there as the U.S. ambassador. Joel worked for two years to organize and present a conference called Rebuilding Sierra Leone, Changing Institutions and Culture. It drew speakers and participants from all over the world. Thank you, Dar Darcy, Joel, would you please stand? And you are here representing the faculty of the university, and I thank you for all you do. This year, we must continue to replenish our shrinking faculty ranks so that student-faculty ratios stay in line with the best and most competitive universities in the country. Therefore, this fall, we will begin searching for 42 new faculty chosen in areas of greatest student demand and they will contribute to USC Connect, an innovative approach to learning that integrates learning within and beyond the classroom. With record enrollments, the university has countless needs. We have many students who need academic, health, and career guidance, and we have the day-to-day -day needs of running a billion-dollar-a-year institution with efficiency and accountability. I wish to thank the quiet leadership that each of Carolina's staff members brings to keeping the order. Carolina's professional and its unclassified staff members deserve our greatest respect. You are not infrastructure, you are the very foundation of our success. I'd like to recognize Derek Huggins for his service to the larger community as well as to our university. Derek has led the Think College Program, a community initiative launched by our Office of Undergraduate Admissions. It began when Derek made a presentation about pathways to college at the Bright Light Baptist Church in Heath Springs, his hometown. That's in Lancaster County, if you didn't know. Dawn Staley made an appearance there too and they reminded elementary and high school students that sacrifices are needed to move ahead in life. May we recognize Derek Huggins. Derek. And I also wish to salute another staff member, Sadler Taylor, Chief Curator of Folk Life and Field Work at our McKissick Museum. We're honoring him for his service to our country. He's been de deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan 
and soon will be going to Kosovo with the South Carolina National Guard in a field artillery unit. Sadler, will you be recognized as well? In the back. Thank you, Sadler. Of course, we need to take even better care of our staff and our faculty. In a recent New York, New York Times article entitled, Do Happier People Work Harder? We were reminded that employed Americans spend more waking hours at work than anywhere else. When people feel a higher calling to their jobs, they work strongly and they work productively. So promoting the well-being of our staff and our faculty is not only the right thing to do, it makes economic sense as well. Although not what I believe you deserved in total, I'm pleased that our Board of Trustees authorized a merit bonus plan for those earning below a set level. It's only a gesture to some, I know, but I hope it's also a statement of the university's commitment to you. In spite of the lingering economic slump, I have asked our CFO and our provost to develop a proposal for more significant merit salary adjustment for staff and faculty next year. We simply cannot afford to lose the talent that is the core of our excellence at a time when we need the talent the most. And we must also take even better care of our physical infrastructure. Deferred maintenance will always be a challenge to our resources, and the General Assembly is to be thanked this year for providing $11 million in one-time funds to help offset some of our needs throughout the system. This year, we totally renovated Patterson Hall and Harper Elliott and Desisor Apartments. Woodrow was painted inside and out, and our intramural practice fields were resodded. The Russell House's third floor was given new paint, carpet, and furniture, and almost 150 new seats were added in the Grand Marketplace, where we also added power outlets for laptops, phones, and iPad charging while you eat there. I guess you could now call the Grand Marketplace a power bar. <laughs> We will continue to identify facilities in need of renewal this year while also advancing several exciting projects, including the groundbreaking for the new Darlemore School of Business, the completion of our Athletics Village, and the Farmer's Market parking and pregame area. And we'll also complete our InnoVista Horizon and Discovery Centers and we plan to adopt and implement our student residential master plan. As everyone knows, money still matters. And you also know that there is less of it that we can depend on the state to provide. This is the new reality, and we accept that we must be ever more self-reliant. We recognize that the state will not be in a position or have the inclination to provide substantial increases in our appropriation, which now is below 10% of our revenue. Our budget model has become that of a private university. It resembles that more than that of a public university of yesterday. But we will remain very sensitive to the plight of students and their families who invest their precious resources in the university. We're making this promise to them. We will never ask for a dollar more in tuition if it is not directly tied to improving the already high quality of their education. When we don't need to invest in a vital program, we won't ask for the money. On the other hand, we cannot devalue the excellent educational experience that we are known for because that would devalue the promise, the promise that we have made to the newest generation of Carolinians. We will be restrained in any future tuition increases, but the quality that has become the cornerstone of our education cannot be allowed to recede. 
On November the 11th, we will kick off the largest comprehensive fundraising campaign in the history of the entire state of South Carolina. Lofty goals like this require all of us to move into campaign mode. This means that personal leadership, increased pride, and extra attention to customer service will be needed. Everything we do as our core business will be notched up a bit as we remind corporations, foundations, alumni, and other friends that the University of South Carolina is the best place for them to invest. This is the place that offers the greatest promise for our future and for their future. The campaign will afford us an opportunity to describe our commitment and our focus. We've outlined several initiatives that bring focus and expression to areas that I see as the university's highest priorities, in addition to the first class education that we provide. This past year, through the generosity of our alumna and highest benefactor, Darla Moore, we were able to begin planning the Ronald E. McNair Center for Aerospace Innovation and Research which will help to create a cluster of knowledge-based aerospace companies, including Boeing and many smaller companies too, by providing applied research development and by creating the future aerospace workforce. Other campaign initiatives are focused around the rule of law, increasing access to high quality public education, creating a healthier state and nation, contributing to a sustainable ener energy future for America, and developing an enriched leadership curriculum and innovative leadership experiences for our students. I believe that these are the right initiatives to help inspire our friends and partners to further invest in the university. Advancing society is what great universities have done throughout history. Universities helped spark the recovery of America after World War II. They helped our nation put Gus Grissom into space and Neil Armstrong on the moon. And they can help America compete with today's other world powers without sacrificing the freedom and America's desire and commitment to serve. And Carolina alumni have never been thwarted by the unknown. They have been drawn through curiosity into new situations, driven to discovery, and risen to the title of problem solvers and leaders. In the coming year, we will be moving forward on the decision to announce a new home for Carolina's alumni. Through the tenaciousness of our Alumni Association Board of Governors, we hope to build a long-awaited new facility. While speaking of alumni, let me introduce you to two of our newest, Brent McCauley and Michael Hunter, over here with their bikes. On September the 11th of this year, only a few days from now, and over the next 18 months, and more than 25,000 miles by bike, they will ride across America to the highest point in all 50 states. Sassafras Mountain near Pickens, South Carolina is their first stop, sponsored by the Office of Outdoor Recreation and in memory of President Andrew Sorensen. Eventually, they plan to catch a ride on a sailboat to Hawaii keeping their carbon footprint small as they reach Mauna Kea. Their adventure is called Cycle for the Summit, and they hope to raise $50,000 in support of a program for week-long urban youth biking expeditions. Brent and Michael are just two of the 250,000 USC graduates that I count on for inspiration and support. You can monitor their progress online or contribute to their effort at www.cycleforthesummit.com.
Would you please help me recognize Brent and Michael? Earlier I mentioned Tom Moore is the new chancellor at USC Upstate. Within the comprehensive four-year university sector, USC Upstate ranks second in the state in the number of South Carolinians enrolled. And the George Dean Johnson School of Economics and Business is an important part of the downtown Spartanburg Renaissance. USC Upstate and USC Aiken consistently rank in the U.S. News listing on the top five four-year baccalaureate public colleges in the South. I'll be at USC Aiken this Saturday to help Chancellor Tom Hallman celebrate their 50th anniversary. Then I'll head on to Athens, Georgia. <laughs> Congratulations to the Pacer family. I'm pleased to note that USC Buford, led by Chancellor Jane Upshaw, is experiencing the largest proportional growth in the system at their Hilton Head Gateway campus, while the historic Buford campus is becoming a mecca for the arts and culture. Our regional universities, Lancaster, Salkahatchee, Sumter, and Union, continue to provide a college education the calling card for success in America in some of the most hard-pressed regions of our state. This year we'll be proposing to our Board of Trustees a plan to provide increased educational access at our regional campuses for South Carolinians who are, who are place-bound or who are particularly impacted by the current economy and we'll do that through the use of technology and online education. Stay tuned for this exciting proposal. Over the past year, the decision to expand our medical school to Greenville has been widely discussed. It's on track for accreditation, and I'm pleased to say we're planning to admit our first students in the fall of 2012. At the same time, we continue to work with Palmetto Health to increase the training of doctors right here in Columbia. Around the rural parts of our state, it's increasingly difficult to access doctors, and we're doing our part to mitigate the shortage and the maldistribution, which will otherwise continue to grow. I know you agree with me that this is the right thing to do. The final person I wish to introduce today also saw a need and did the right thing. Patricia recently met Katie Scagliano, a 13-year-old Pinewood Prep student from Somerville, South Carolina. Katie's story began in 2008 with a cabbage seedling she brought home from school and planted. When that seedling became a 40-pound head of cabbage, she donated it to a soup kitchen where it helped to feed more than 275 people. From that experience, she established a garden at her school and has established a not-for-profit corporation, raised funds, and now offers grants to other kids so that they can start school-based gardens that can be used to supply food banks. Her organization is known as Katie's Crops, and she was asked to appear before the United Nations to share her experience. Katie, you participate, you innovate, and you lead. You're an entrepreneur with a big heart, and we hope you'll consider enrolling in Carolina's class of 2021. Will you and your mom, Stacy, please stand and be recognized? Katie's story brings me again to my personal refrain for this year, participate, innovate, and lead. And those words, by the way, are reflected in the new beautiful banners behind me that stand now in front of the McKissick. I know they're hidden from most of you by the, uh, by the tree. I believe that these are the three words that embody the best of Carolina's legacy and also the greatness of our tomorrow. 
Life without participation is like being a passenger in a journey without knowing where you're going. Without participating as a citizen of the university or indeed of our great country through community service and through voting means that we have less of a voice in our future. And without innovation, South Carolina and America will be in danger of losing the edge that has created the most resourceful, creative, and industrious people in history. The University of South Carolina must and will contribute to America's spirit of innovation. And finally, to lead, all of our state and our state and national universities provide a good education. However, few are the universities who accept a role in leading their state to higher levels of economic performance and social well-being, and who can actually deliver on that promise. This is the promise of a flagship university, carrying the flag of its state, seeing the name of its state embedded in its own name. This is the university for South Carolina, the one who participates, who innovates, and who leads. Our Gamecock spirit is evident in all we do, and this is the best year for all of us as individuals to participate, innovate, and lead. In closing, let me remind you that we're proudly displaying our two College World Series uh, trophies, and I welcome you to have a picture taken with them. Coach Tanner, who's here, wants to share these back-to-back -back victories broadly. I found the quiet strength, the perseverance, and the character exhibited by our college back-to-back -back championship baseball teams I found that they served as an inspiration for our University of South Carolina's leadership. Who among us did not swell with pride over that performance? Who did not stand an inch taller when we heard the humor, the dedication to teamwork, and the kindness, frankly, the kindness that flowed from the words used by our players at the end of the series? With that, let me wish you the very best for the year ahead. May we all do all that we can to serve to the best of our abilities and to reach more people and to impact more lives and more communities than ever before. I am so very proud to serve as president and I wish all of you a most successful, healthy, and exciting year. Thank you very much, everyone.